leave it to the experts. These were the words that I heard as a 25-year-old sitting in a neurologist's office after countless visits and still without a genetic diagnosis for what was causing my muscle weakness. I was at the crossroads of my life to listen or to go on a foolish journey to find out the answers for myself. Of course, as a young man, I took the call for adventure. I decided to quit my dream job at IBM, the one that I studied so hard to get into. How hard could it be, I foolishly thought. Let me figure it out for myself. It wasn't too long before I realized that the journey to find a genetic diagnosis for rare disease was indeed a difficult problem. Now, imagine trying to find a typo in a page full of A's, C's, T's, and G's. These are the one-letter abbreviation for the basic building blocks of DNA. Not so hard to find this typo. Now, imagine trying to find this typo in six billion letters, or the equivalent of 1,700 copies of the Bible. The mutation I was looking for was one or two typos in six billion letters, or 1,700 copies of the Bible. This is what was causing my genetic mutation, why I walk funny, can't go upstairs, and in constant pain from my muscles wasting away. And they tell me it's only going to get worse. I have spent over half my life trying to understand and solve this very problem. And I'm going to share with you my personal and scientific journey in trying to understand this disease better in my family while helping others along the way. The story spans three continents over three decades and required major scientific breakthroughs along the way. So I was born in Cambodia as the youngest of seven children. My family came to Australia as refugees when I was just a baby. So here, I've conveniently labelled everyone one to seven. <laughs> I'm number seven, the youngest, if you haven't figured it out. So although I've lived in the United States for the last seven years, I still maintain a very strong Aussie accent for two reasons. The first, I grew up in the western suburbs of Sydney and a proud product of the public school system there. So yeah, I might stuff up my grammar every now and then, but hey. <laughs> the second is that I'm a homebody. I like to stay at home, play computer games, and watch lots and lots of movies. So I didn't go out much and socialize with my American colleagues. When I was just 10 years old, my sister was diagnosed with a muscle disease. My siblings didn't have a background in biology or genetics, so we didn't realize the impact that this would have on our own genetic destinies. So we knew nothing about genetic inheritance. But the awesome fact is that we all carry the legacy of our ancestors in every cell of our body, in a chemical molecule called DNA. DNA contains the instructions to make you, you. And it's the only information that's always passed on between generations. Your ancestors may not have been successful people, but they were successful enough to have kids and pass on two sets of three billion letters to the next generation. Now, DNA is organized in 23 pairs of chromosomes for a total of 46 chromosomes. We receive one set from mum and one set from dad. As we have two copies of each chromosome, we also have two copies of each gene. The only exception is our sex chromosomes. Genes contain the information to make proteins that are the building blocks of our bodies. People with recessive diseases have two defective copies of a particular gene and can't make the corresponding protein. My parents were the carriers of a recessive muscle disease and each had one defective copy of a particular gene responsible for a muscle protein. So I'm going to break it down for you. Each one of my siblings had a 50% chance of inheriting one defective copy or a 25% chance of receiving two defective copies. My sister and I got the bad end of the stick and we were the 25% chance to receive two defective copies and couldn't make a particular muscle protein. At the time, not many genes were known to cause genetic diseases and for muscle diseases, only one gene was known. 
So there was no way for me to know what my genetic destiny was to develop a muscle disease, since I was born healthy and with normal muscle function. Now, let's fast forward almost a decade. When I was 19, I started noticing that simple everyday things in life were starting to get more difficult. I couldn't stand up for long periods of time. I struggled to go upstairs, and I would often lose balance on uneven surfaces. I would go from doctor to doctor trying to understand what was wrong with me. I eventually received a clinical diagnosis of muscular dystrophy, a generalized term to describe a muscle-wasting disease. I also realized that I had the same muscle disease as my sister, and it was genetic, and it was inherited. At the time, the Human Genome Project was recently completed, and this was the translation of one set of three billion letters into A's, C's, T's, and G's. And not only that, but where each gene was located in the pages and pages of text. Scientists now had a map to find genes that cause diseases. For muscular dystrophy, there were a number of genes that were already known by the time they looked at my DNA. However, finding mutations in these genes was a very laborious task. For every gene, a set of experiments was designed to amplify it in parts so that we can find out the letters within each one of those parts. So the aim was to identify letters that were different between patient DNA and the human genome reference. But again, this is a very laborious and slow process. The researchers at the University of Sydney would perform this task one gene at a time for a subset of genes known to cause muscular dystrophy. Many years passed, and I was still frustrated as they hadn't identified the gene that was causing my disease. So researchers took a different approach, this time to identify regions of the genome that my affected sister and I shared compared to our other siblings. Logically, these regions would contain mutations that were more likely to cause our disease. So they were able to identify one shared region, and within that region was a gene already known to cause muscular dystrophy. When they screened this gene, they were able to find the mutation. So this is how a genetic report looks like. And this is uh, the celebration cake with my wife, Angela, um, thanking the hard work from the researchers at University of Sydney based at Westmead. So I had my answers in terms of the gene and mutation that was causing my disease. For most patients, this would be the end of their journey. But I was not satisfied. Surely we would find an answer much faster for other rare disease patients. There was a new emerging technology called next generation sequencing that allowed for the letters of every gene in the human genome to be determined simultaneously and rapidly. So no longer were we limited to just looking at known disease genes, but we could easily also identify novel disease genes and give answers to patients desperately seeking what was wrong with them. This is what drew me to the United States. I saw a chance to rapidly reduce that diagnosis time instead of looking at one gene at a time. What took me over 10 years to find out, we can now find out in just a matter of weeks. So in genetics, we're actually interested in where sequence of letters are different between individuals. And this is what contributes to diversity, such as the color of our hair, the color of our eyes, and also what contributes to disease. We can also call these changes variants. The challenge is to identify variants that are common and those that are rare in the population. And the reason why this is so important is that rare diseases are caused by rare changes in DNA. So my project in Boston was to gather or accumulate genetic data from 60,000 individuals to identify over millions of variants observed in people. And by counting the number of individuals for a particular variant, we can now determine whether it was common or rare in the population. And using this information, 
we can now filter common variants and variants unlikely to cause diseases to reduce this problem to searching through approximately 100 rare variants that are likely to cause disease in patients. The resource that the colleague, my colleagues and I created is now used all around the world by researchers and also by clinical genetics labs. So anyone, anywhere around the world can use this to help find a genetic diagnosis and rapidly reduce the, the diagnosis time. Since its release in 2014, it has been accessed over five million times. So in 20 years, we've gone from six billion letters, or the equivalent of 1,700 copies of the Bible, to just 100 rare variants likely to cause a genetic disease in patients. By using inheritance patterns, we can further narrow this down to just a handful of likely variants. Despite this amazing success, the diagnosis rate is still only half. So there are many mysteries in the two sets of three billion letters yet to be learned and interpret to improve that diagnosis rate. Having genetic diagnosis is not the end of the journey for rare disease patients, but the start of a new journey, and that's to explore therapeutic options. Over the last few years, new technologies have been developed to precisely edit our genomes and to potentially be able to fix the typos in DNAs that we see in some rare disease patients. So holds the promise of personalized medicine, the ability to address the genetic root cause instead of just the many clinical symptoms that we observe in patients. So I've described for rare disease patients the ability to develop tools to conquer the interpretation of our genetic destiny. And something really exciting is that we now have the tools to start reversing some of that genetic destiny. Last month, it was my 40th birthday, and I received the best birthday present ever. My colleagues published in the prestigious journal Nature a way to fix my mutation and demonstrated this on cells that I donated. And what this potentially means is that if this works, this could halt the progression of my muscle disease. So I'm at the crossroads again in my life to leave it to the experts or go on another adventure. <laughs> this time, to help translate these genetic technologies to help other patients on the next step of their journey. Thank you.